For some reason, Nino has left you in a note uh, and set out her own. You and Eleven decide to go to the TV station where she used to work, looking for clues to escape this world. Along the way, Eleven keeps looking at her device, glimpses at her lips moving, silently reciting the poem. You know that much, such many related incidents always have something to do with the obsession of the person at the score, the girl in front of you, and the mysterious call at her uh, at 3 a.m. host have, m must have a significant connection. But she can't speak now, and it's hard to recount the details in text. <sighs> it seems that you still need to think of a way to ease this plight and resolve this mania crisis. Your sighs seem to startle Eleven. She looks at you timidly and starts typing on her device. Sorry. Did I cause you trouble again? Even if I've done something wrong, please don't hesitate to tell me. If it comes up for you to her device, her eyes uh, flitting around, still not daring to look at you. Reassure her. Hey, you've done nothing wrong. I just feel a bit frustrated after work, having to work overtime. But I'm quite envious of you. Hey, that Eleven looks at you with a puzzled expression. Even your fear doesn't change your passion and anticipation for your job. When you have to work overtime every day while risking your life and dealing with superiors with big titles and are base that are basically strangers to you, it's only natural that you get burned out regardless of how much you loved it in the beginning. Yeah. Is is it really that terrible? I remember they used to say that. Rookies can't leave off the office before the seniors, can't start eating before the seniors, and must open the taxi before the senior before the seniors. Could this are these all be true? Evan is suddenly typing really fast, leaving you stumbled, stumped by the questions. <laughs> well, that's a bit exaggerated. You take a deep breath and start walking slowly towards the TV station at 11. I've got some excellent, warm and reliable companions. Even when I'm out of strength, with them around, I became full of courage and fear, full of courage and fearless. And I speak up and say no, and no when something truly unreasonable happens. Be sure to remember this. When the topic suddenly turns to herself, Eleven nods with a shy smile and starts typing on her device with by while biting her lip. Thank you. I will. I know what it feels to receive encouragement in the workplace. As Eleven walks and types, she starts to tell her story. I don't know what the real call at 3 a.m. podcast heard in my voice, but becoming a radio host was indeed my aspiration. At the time, I had just graduated and was very confused about my future. I originally planned to listen to my family and become a clerk. You know, don't stand out too much, uh, but don't be too useless. But the voice in my heart was telling me that wasn't what I wanted. So I made a call to the radio program I've always listened to. Ellen gazes at the TV station in the distance, the gentleness in her eyes stirring like the night breeze. Actually, don't actually don't really remember what exactly the radio host said. All I remember is that she said... She became a host so that she could hear the voices she wanted to hear. Her words inspired me at the time, so I followed my inner voice and became a radio host too. I would taps away on her phone device and shows you the text with the same shy smile on her face. You somehow sense her anticipation, and indeed, based on what she told you, she's worth the compliment. Well, it's impressive that you followed her your own voice, not sure that show. Sure. Must be quite excellent. <laughs> Eleven shyly waves her hand and answers you with, all, with the only voice she can muster. No, I'm not that great of a host. This is just, just my dream. You're really not quite there yet. I thought you're still well dressed today. Your makeup isn't perfect. As a customer, I, uh, consumer, I prefer co customer, consumer, I prefer more innocent look. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, good radio host would make these mistakes. Your voice isn't sweet enough and you stutter. You can't satisfy these listeners like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. God damn it. <sighs> these are all things that I say to myself a lot, honestly. Like, the, the, the little voice in my bed, the back of my head always tells me that. 
when I when I stream, when I do this kind of things, when I record, uh, it's, I think it sort of all contributed to part of my burnout. It's really hard. It's really hard to grow in this oversaturated thing because every time something unfortunate happens, every time you don't think about, um, every time you don't do enough, in your opinion, especially if you have high standards of yourself, it's really hard to sit here and just completely resonate with something right and just like oh it's not it's not my fault right it's really hard to say that it's not my fault because who else can you blame who else can you blame really you, can't, can't, you don't really feel like someone else is at fault i can't be faulting you guys the people who watch this and whatever else can't be faulting you so who do i blame myself i'm the only one to blame so all of these voices, you aren't enough. Your voice isn't stu is not, is stupid. You're not entertaining to watch. People are not satisfied watching you. You are um, you are boring. You are just like all of these little gremlins that decide at the back of your head constantly remind you of how worthless everything you do is. It's something I think a lot of creative people have to do with. Uh, that little voice in the back of our heads. I'm not sure exactly how people deal with it myself because i myself struggle dealing with it like i may sound confident i may sound stuff like that but it's really hard to deal with this especially if it's yourself telling you that like, even worse than with when others though others tend to be a bit more polite too too polite to say that <laughs> but you feel like they think that too and it's just like it's, uh, it's a bit of a wormhole that you don't want to find yourself deep within. You can't finish your sentences and your voice is at up to par. Your interactions with the audience are that disappointing. <laughs> Go to the TV station and learn from the excellent host there. That's how you'll realize you'll dream. The audience and listeners didn't spend real money just to get this. You didn't, can't they dream on your uh, your way to success? What? Who are you to judge her? Who are we? We are the most perfect workers, the most perfect products. Only the ones like us are perfect. Those passing men and women continue to slouch away. Their tone is calm, but these words make you frown. The smile on Leva's face has faded. You feel a pang of sympathy and carefully begin wanting to offer some offer some comfort. Don't listen to them. Your dream will come true. Believe in yourself, just like how you followed your inner voice. We will definitely restore everything to normal and find, find your lost voice. You're going to realize your dream. This world has uh, been gleaming with an eerie glow, but now you see the light gradually returning to Eleven's eyes. Noticing your gaze for the first time, Eleven does not lower her head. Oh, she's blushing. That's cute. Well, they suggested we go to the TV station to learn something. So let's go. Um. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. Night 2, Life Start. In order to shake off friend, f fanatic fan Nino and Chief temporarily part ways. However, that mysterious voice online once again finds Nino. Okay, let's... let's uh, Lamia. Oh, no. No, Retra. Ignis. Yeah, it's Ignis. Yeah, it's, it was Ignis. Okay. Nino. I should have got rid of him. The girl takes a curious peek, glancing back at the streets outside of the alley. Seeing the computer-headed guy in the big coat runs uh, straight into the next alley, the girl finally breathes a sigh of relief. Come finally. How do you manage to follow me in here? It scared me enough outside already. Nina frowns and thinks for a while in vain. Finally, she gives up. Well, 
<laughs> Forget it. I only had time to leave a message before running out of the phone booth when the guy popped up. I need to find a way to get to Chief and the Levitt quickly. But how do I sneak into the fee station in the middle of the night? And what if I'm stuck in the entrance and run into the computer head again? <laughs> if only I had ground, a, a ground drilling or wall climbing superpowers in this strange world, or perhaps I could squeeze myself onto the V and wriggle my way into the TV station through the cables. <sighs> in my dreams, I must think of something feasible. What if is it is feasible? Who is it? Not far away, a half-closed internet cafe. On one of the computers, has lit, f lit, fa lit up faintly. A shadow hovers above the screen, speaking in an eerie voice. Like you've said, this is a strange world. Why not give it a try? Give it a try? But there's nothing here? You've got here several hundred old computers. I'd better off streaming uh, myself digging up some antique from the rest. Uh, what a let down. I'm off. Still have to stream the game I didn't finish yesterday. That the girl puts her hands behind her head and makes for the exit. But before leaving, she glimpses the search surreptitiously at the computer screen where she, the shadow is. If the world could be changed by dreaming. Huh? What are you saying? That I would sleep in this dream and never wake up until the joyous world of my imagination has been created. As if murmuring to herself, the shadow moves from one computer to another. Every time it touches the screen, the computer miraculously turns on and displays an image. Images of all kinds of video games crop up one after another on the computer screens. Some of the girl can name, and many more she's only heard of in this myth. So now, do you want to give it a try? You just want to do... You just do what you do uh, all the time, only in a different environment. Want to give it a shot? Maybe you can catch up with your companions, as you said. Alright. Get to experience everything here, right? Hold on. Can I take a picture? Acting calm, the gun swallows and takes out her phone. She turns around and uh, tasks the shadow. Certainly. <laughs> <laughs> Great, I finally got a chance to play with these antiques. I'm so gonna show off to my fans when I get back. But she's noticing something. Yeah, there's no game controller or disk drive. How am I supposed to? Of course, not here. As she shadow turns on the last computer, the entire space is enveloped in dazzling white light. The girl's figure gradually blurs as if she's about to fuse with the space. What kind of voice will you find me? Or rather, what kind of voice do you want to hear? Switch brain in a tank. Oh, you're back. Okay. I'll travel over the road. Could you spare a moment of your life for a Arist Aristotle Aquinas? Hey, hey, digger. 
You see the golden fish from last time again. It's still swimming back and forth in the computer, as if waiting for you to get chat with it. This time I want to discuss with you the topic of humans and commodities. What do you want to discuss? Very good, very good. Wise ones always unknowingly attract each other. It seems that fate has brought us to meet again in this world. Please take a good look at this world. Everyone is exhausted, as if they have slapped of all their value. But from another perspective, only by maximizing one's value can one become the perfect commodity. Commodities facilitate trade and exchange, but they also mark everything with a clear price. Once humans, who proclaim their life as priceless, are marked with a price, do they lose their humanity? Listen to the goldfish endless theories. Try to dig up some useful information from it. Unfortunately, you don't get more information about this world. Quietly make up your mind to not engage with the fellow next time. Not the shake of the fanatic fan. Okay, live start. There you go. He opens her eyes, the fires are over in the closet space. The space is entirely white, with only essential facilities, including a bed and a bathroom. Apart from that, there is an enormous game room filled with heaps of games and live equip uh, streaming equipment. That shadowy thing didn't lie to me. The like admirer in antiques, Nino carefully picks out a disc from one of the shelves in the game room. The cover image seems to be a father and his son standing side by side on an icy plane, about to embark on an epic adventure. She tries to recognize the words on the cover, but this is a product from before nightfall, after all. So she can barely make out a few words like, Lord of War. <laughs> God of War? This is, this is God of War? Nina sighs, wishing she had spent more time in the retro game section of this myth. She blames her obsession with flaming and she lets the clue slip away reluctantly. Right, I have my phone. She slips, uh, slaps her thighs and fumbles with her phone, just as she's debating whether or not to take a photo or start potential viral pulse on this myth first. Live stream begins in one minute, please turn on the computer and get ready. A voice comes out from somewhere in the room. She hurriedly drops her phone to investigate the source of the audio in her room. Life begins in 30 seconds, please get ready. The voice keeps echoing in the room, but she can't find its source anywhere. Live stream has begun. Please prepare to start streaming, otherwise extreme measures will be taken. She looks at the computer in front of her and surprisingly identical to the one she has at home. Why is the first thing forcing me to stream? What does that, what does that mean by extreme measures? Too bad for you, Inosama is fearless. Show me what you can do then. This is detected. Live stream has not started. Extreme measures will be taken. Every object in the room except the computer starts burning, belching out smoke. A few discs cuts have caught fire. Need the quick, uh, quickly for jumps forward to put out the flames. <laughs> okay, okay. You want me to start streaming, right? I'll do it. I'll stream these games for the sake of playing them. But mind you, you, the voice in the room, you'd better not let me catch you, or else I'll be streaming myself hammering you into the ground. Takes a deep breath and indignantly clicks the start streaming button. Hmm. Hmm. I'm getting this raven. Yeah. Interesting. Dear show team, hello, it's me again, your loyal listener. Recently, it seems Mr. Levin's program style has changed. It feels more and more like the rumored ghost call. Is she intentionally imitating it? To be honest, I preferred her old style. Lately, many people have received the ghost call. It's said that the people who answered the calls were all affected by mania. Is it true? I hope all is well with you. Hey, hey my, dis my friends in this city, did the last story scare you? This time I've brought a new story, the Cursed Pendulum Clock. It's, uh, it's set in an abandoned old house in the Syndicate. There's a cursed pendulum clock. No matter who steps into that house, they will hear the ticks and tocks of that clock in their ears. The sound of that clock is sometimes near, sometimes far, sometimes loud, sometimes soft. 
always echoing in the victim's ears. No matter where you go, the sound of pendulum clock won't disappear. No matter where you go, the sound of the pendulum clock won't disappear. Even when you sleep, it won't stop. It will forever stay there until the victim passes away. Many people have been driven nearly mad by this. Of course, what's more frightening than hearing the clock's noise not stop is when the clock noise suddenly stops, because this signifies that the victim is about to... Ahem, I'd rather not get into that part of the story. Hmm. Interesting. Um, I think I th I'm going to stop the recording here. It's a good place to do that kind of thing. Uh, it's about 40 minutes total, if I'm not mistaken. We're going to be doing the next part after uh, the sm after these messages, as when well, as was one imagined. No, oh, next part in, ge in general. <laughs> I'll be right back. See you in the next recording.